Chapter 27 With both borrowed lines, Minley and the dragon continued their journey. Minley remade her compass with her rabbit rice bowl and followed the needle's pointed direction. As they traveled, the land became more barren, rocky, and steep. Without trees to tame it, the wind blew wildly, burning Minley's cheeks red with cold. The icy air shoved and pushed them, as if trying to keep them back. Late in the afternoon, after traveling up stony ground, Dragon made a noise. Look up ahead, he said. Far ahead of them seemed to be a spot of bright yellow. Against the gray landscape, it seemed like a fallen piece of gold. Is it a forest? Trees with yellow leaves? Minley asked. Then she looked at the gray stone surrounding them. But what trees could grow here? I think there is a village, Dragon said, squinting his eyes. If there is, we can get you some warmer clothes. Even though the cold hadn't bothered the dragon, he had noticed her shivering. We won't reach it before night, Minley said, but I think there's a cave up ahead. Let's stay there for the night, and tomorrow we'll try to reach the village, or whatever it is. The dragon agreed, and they made camp in the cave. The king's supply of traveling cakes saved her and dragon from hunger, but Minley wished for the thick silk blanket. Even in the shelter of the cave, away from the wind, the earth was stark and cold. Minley built a fire as quickly as she could, and sighed as its warmth slowly heated the air. But that night, Minley could not fall asleep. Even with the dragon snoring behind her, the fire crackling, and her blanket around her shoulders, her eyes did not close. Like the stone dust that the wind blew, thoughts kept circling in her head. She kept thinking about Ma and Ba, and the orphan buffalo boy. With pangs of guilt, she thought about how Ma and Ba pushed her to go home early from the field, how her rice bowl was always the first filled, how every night when she went to sleep in her warm bed, she knew they were there, and how worried they must have been that now she was not. The buffalo boy didn't have that. Instead, he had a dirt floor, a pile of grass for his bed, a muddy buffalo, and a secretive friend. Yet, he turned away her copper coin and laughed in the sun. Minley couldn't quite understand it, and somehow felt ashamed. But just as Minley shook her head with confusion, there was a sudden sound outside the cave. What was that? She cocked her head. There it was again, like a low grumble of thunder. Was it going to rain? Minley quietly got up and slipped out of the cave to see. But when she got outside, she screamed. The noise had not been the grumble of thunder. It had been a growl of a tiger. The giant tiger snarled and then jumped right at Minley. 